All right, let me turn this mic on. And let me um, begin again, modeling floors, ceilings, and roofs. Uh, this class, or at least this, uh, this section, is a little different for me because I, uh, I did visit Specs for Less. I got my uh, prescription glasses. Helps a little bit progressive. Uh, they're definitely progressive. It's, uh, it's going to be a challenge for me, but I want to give this a go with this new, uh, this new uh, eyeglass prescription and just see how it goes. So let me get over to Revit. Let me get to Revit and um, let me just read verbatim. Uh, picking up where we left off, if you remember, we were talking about constructing you know, by footprint. Well, now we're going to apply a, a roof by extrusion. The roof by extrusion method is best applied for roof shapes that are generated by extrusion of a profile, such as sawtooth roofs, barrel vaults, and waveform roofs. Like the roof by footprint method, it is based on a sketch where the sketch that defines the shape of the roof is drawn in elevation or section view, not in plan view, and is then extruded along the plan of the building. Now, roofs by extrusion do not have an option to follow the building footprint, but that is often needed to accommodate the requirements of the design. To accomplish this, you can use the vertical opening tool to trim the edges of an extruded roof relative to the building outline. Let's briefly review the concept behind the vertical opening tool. You create a roof by extrusion by defining a profile and elevation of 3D that is then extruded above the building. The extrusion is usually based on a work plane that is not perpendicular to the building footprint. If the shape of the building is non-rectangular in the footprint, or the shape of the roof you want to create is not to be rectangular, this tool will help you, uh, will let you carve geometry from the roof to match the footprint of the building, or to get any plan shape you, uh, you need using a plan sketch. With sketch, based design, any closed loop of lines creates a positive shape. Every loop inside it is negative. The next one inside that negative one will be positive and so on. Now, I'm going to draw a roof by extrusion, but the final roof shape should be uh, limited to a small offset from the, the walls and uh, to clip the roof. So the shape of the building footprint, um, the, shape of the shape of the building footprint, the vertical opening tool is going to be used um, to draw in plan view of the roof a negative shape that will remove the portions of the roof that extend beyond the walls. And a research I've, I've found has um, said we may have to do that twice. So, yeah, if you um, if you draw a wall in a plan view, let's say level one, just a regular eight-inch generic wall. And we were to uh, go to, uh, let's say, the, let's create a, um, let's go to South Elevation, and let's create a level, and let's call this one, this should be level three, if I can get it there. Well, that's at 20. So let's do another one. Level four. Now let's just get down the distance we want. Let's get this down to ten foot. Four levels, and we have uh, this small little structure. Now in, ele in, in the south elevation, if I was to go to uh, roof in the architectural build panel, and I was to do roof by extrusion, well, I could pick a plane, and if I picked and hit tab, and I got this wall as my reference plane, roof, reference level, and offset. Well, it'll be on level four. And then I'm just gonna take a simple, a simple um, spline and draw a non-rectangular roof. And that'll be the extrusion. Room bounding. Reference level. Plumb cut. 
thickness. We well, see the roof type has already been selected for us. If I go to generic nine, where well, you see the thickness is there. If I go to steel truss, you can see there's a thickness there. Oh, just, and we could bring in other types of uh, roofs. All right, so I just created the one roof. Let's take a look at it in 3D. And as you can see, um, if I shade this a little bit, you'll see you have this roof that uh, indeed does uh, exist above the, uh, the walls. Now, if I grab these walls, I attach the top base. You'll see that in elevation, the walls will attach and conform with the shape of the roof. Now, this is a little tricky, um, but if we were to go to a floor plan that has the roof, and we wanted to, uh, as you can see, it's a little, it's not overhanging over here, there it is. It's not overhanging over here. Well, we could, as you can see, we could change that a little bit, right? If we view uh, tile views, ZA, let's close some we don't need. I don't need level one. I don't need level three. ZA, tile views, ZA. So I have the 3D view, level four in the south view. I want to turn the underlay on in this view. Uh, if you go to the level three floor plan, uh, I want to put on underlay. Underlay, I want to put underlay level one. I'm just going to apply. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can get what I want. Am I in the right view here? I am in the right view, right? Wireframe, look down, level one. I right, so you can see, the, the, we're on level four, but you can see with the underlay on, we have the uh, floors underneath. Now, if I was to select the roof, you'll see this tool that pops up called vertical opening. Now, this is a little tricky, but I found that if you draw a line, And let's say I wanted to just let it overhang a little bit. Now let's bring it up here. I could change this later. Now if I could leave this open, I tried closing this loop before and it returns an error message. But let's see if this will cut it. Lines must include the highlight lines are open on one end. Yeah, no, I know, but that's, it gave me an error message when I closed it. And this is, this isn't what I wanted to do. But it's going to cut the center of the roof out. That's not what I wanted. Detach targets. Now, see? You see how I cut the roof? That's, that's not the way this tool's supposed to work. You're supposed to be able, see if I close this loop, if I close this loop, it's going to do the same thing. If I close this loop, let's see if I can do it this way. Yeah, it's going to cut the, it's going to cut it out. Now, there was a way that they did it. Let me see if I can do it this way. Let's see if I can do it this way. This way, this way, this way. Let's see if this will cut out just the closed loop and give me the uh, approximately one foot off the side of the... Yeah, there you go. So, if I want to get a consistent 10 inch overhang, I could do this while I'm editing the, uh, 
edit the profile. Well, no, no, I don't want to edit the profile yet. Um, I want to edit the vertical cut point, vertical opening. So I could make this, I could move this over if I wanted, make this 10 inches. Hold on, we got it. So if you wanted to get it accurate, select the roof, vertical opening, select this line, zoom in, grab its dimension, change this to 10 inches, come around this guy, grab this one, find its dimension, change it to 10 inches, same thing at the top, Find its dimensions, temporary dimension. Keep this all, uh, again, that's a little uh, more shallow than I want, but this is just for it, uh, this is just, just for this exercise. I can bring this up just a little bit, make a couple with that. But now, we still have this one piece. If you remember, we still have this one, this one piece. So we would have to, uh, when we created that, we have to drag this to make sure it was 10 inches over. Or we can cut this out too. There's no reason why we can't do two. So if I was to create a vertical opening, another one, it may let us do it. Another vertical opening, it might not let us interloop two of them. But if I was to grab this one and come to Highlight lines overlap, lines may not form closed loops. Well, let's just hold that thought. Let's double check this one. This is supposed to be 10, ten inches, right? That's not the 10 inches I wanted. I don't want 10 inches from. Uh, hold on. Patience is a virtue. This, this dimension is being taken from there. That's what I wanted. 10 inches. All right, so let's see if I can cut it out with two rectangles that are sharing um, overlaps. And sure enough, can't have overlapping lines. So then this one, this one would have to come over. Can't overlap it. This one is considered overlapping. So that's, again, is that overlapping? Yes, yeah, see, it's part of the locked into there. Well, let's see here. I've already cut this roof. I've already cut this. So if I was to delete these, I'll delete this one. Let's see if it would create a problem for us. We revert back to just a hole in the roof. It may. And that's exactly what happened. So you have to experiment with that, but you're able to shave off and, and carve off pieces of uh, the roof. If indeed your intent is to create a non-rectangular roof, and there's absolutely nothing to say that this roof, or this roof could have been um, not perpendicular to the line of the building. Let me just uh, get this back to where it was. All right, so, Okay, you may or may not, you have, may have to do this in the, uh, in the roof creation itself. When you're creating it, maybe bring it vertically, uh, yeah, you could say vertically, vertically 10 inches uh, above, overhang. Uh, let's see, is it locked? No. Uh, in any event, in any event, uh, that's basically the way that you do a roof by extrusion. And it's as simple as just an elevation, an elevation line, any shape you want, right? Roof by extrusion, any shape you want. All you have to do is pick a plane. Or pick a line, to, to, and use the line that it was sketched in. So picking a plane is it always useful. Uh, but again, if you wanted to have that come from, let's say, an angle of here and come this way, non-perpendicular to the building. There's nothing saying you couldn't do that and then carve it off. Um, so it would not only be slanted 
from a south elevation like this, but it would come in on the angle non-perpendicular to the building. That's just something you can practice on your own. I don't want to get too far into it. But that's um, that's by uh, extrusion. That's roof by extrusion. So um, again, it seems basic, and this is in the early conceptual design phases. But um, at least I got my glasses. That's an accomplishment. So, and they got them done in a week, right over the bridge, right in Staten Island, Specs for less on Forest Avenue. So that's a, that's a good thing. Getting there. This building information modeling can be uh, real taxing on you. You gotta really uh, eventually walk away and work on yourself, you know. So hopefully we have that luxury now that we're in a waiting pattern. I guess it'll be interesting to see what happens at the end of July. But a lot of current events going on. A lot of things reopening today. No malls yet. No malls. No baseball stadiums. Casinos are opening up soon. Restaurants, but for outdoor dining, it's going to be slow. I hope they really uh, they can balance this because millions and millions of people uh, they're susceptible. They're going to be susceptible to uh, to this volatility in the market, present company included. But again, no risk, no reward. So at least uh, if you were following along for the past few months, we uh, didn't uh, fill our days with unproductive time. Uh, some of it, some of it I did, but uh, I tried to remain as, as focused as I could because there's a lot more. And you know, once you get through the 3D aspect of it, and, and you, you look back and you start annotating it and pulling and deriving all of these attributes and, uh, and these variables from the model you're going to start to see how that initial time we took modeling it is now going to work in our benefit when we document it because we're going to be able to pull so much information from these models that uh, have been inherently embedded with metadata. So, not to beat a dead horse, but uh, I can't rest on my laurels. Let me get back to this... Uh, Tutorial stop it. I, I'm using a new uh, a new editor and a streamer encoder. So let's see how this works. Anyway, stay tuned. I'm trying to get. I guess subscriptions would help, but that'll come over time. Uh, I'm getting a lot of views, a lot of watch time, uh, and in multiple places all over the globe, primarily in the United States. But um, I'm getting some watch hours. It'd be nice to have a small revenue stream, but the YouTube, par the YouTube partner program requires you to have uh, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 views. And the views aren't views that, are, that come from ad impressions. So they have to, they don't come from ad impressions yet. <laughs> Eventually they do, but not yet, not yet. So it, it takes, it's gonna take a long time, it's persistence. It's persistence, and again, you know, this is a perfect example. The online portal is a perfect example of how this this software works, because um, it's so integrated into you know into our economy and into our everyday workplace, our our workflow. And again, I'm not changing, I'm not trying to change every, every company's culture, but if you're in this line of business, I would definitely give it a thought. I, I'm using it in various different methods. Uh, but, and there's that too, yeah. I guess uh, Mario Cuomo just hit the nail on the head. When you're in this environment, there is a, a small sense of community. Again, what project you're building and in which community and the players involved is always circumspect. Because again, I've been in a lot of online meetings and people just join and they don't say anything and they're perfectly capable of seeing the transmission and they, they get to make their own decisions based on silent witness technology. And that's not fair. That's not fair. So online collaboration is something 
we really haven't gotten into yet. We talked about it, and in a, a work setting where there's multiple workstations, it's one thing, but from a distance where, where there's no one next to you to test to see if your model's updating and everything's working accordingly is tricky. Uh, that, and that's the goal. If you can make an organization run, well, you never have to see each other. Isn't that an accomplishment, right? Isn't that an accomplishment? Making a, a, a team of uh, folks, for lack of a better term, that somehow can find a way to work together and, and reap the benefits of the collective efforts without ever actually even being in the same room with one another. And that is the ult ultimate in uh, non-collaboration. If you're in a collaborative environment, uh, aiding and abetting, uh, corroborating, all those, those things, those things hold true. This is, I guess, this is a risk management tool to a certain extent too. I never said that. I didn't, I didn't say I was gonna pay for that. There's just so many wacky aspects of it. And now that we're in this virtual world where we're gonna have to demonstrate uh, our chops and, and be able to perform like this in an online remote capacity, and it appears from the latest, what, year since March, well, that's, it's becoming a reality. It's becoming a reality. So I got a little bit of, I got me, I gotta work on me, I, my appearances. Oh, it's brutal. I'm not very photogenic. But the glasses are going to help. The glasses will help me. Anyway, so I don't want to think myself too far into the cubicle because getting out of the cubicle was very, very difficult. And I, I have to credit, I have to credit the, uh, the government's lockdown on this whole situation. If it wasn't for the current body of elected officials. We don't know what the hell is going on. Carnage in the streets, we've seen that. Carnage in the streets. We hear all these stories of body bang after body bang, and it seems like everything's getting better. It almost seemed like it was uh, make-believe. I mean, unless you're on the front line seeing it, it takes a bit of effort to really imagine that actually happening, but it did. I can't imagine this is a hoax. You know, people, people's lives were lost and fortunes were turned upside down and people are losing millions. And if they didn't have a backup plan, they're gonna have to rely on Uncle Sam. And Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam is, uh, he's an interesting character. How he manifests himself in this going forward is going to be anyone's guess. Well, we'll see.